Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And with Dad here, we're down at Selsey. We're on the beach. It is 8.20 at night. We've got a lovely sunset. The wind has died down and we are here to give you guys some more beach fishing tips. Yeah, Mike's been getting a lot of information come through on the old PMs and private mails. And it's all about shore fishing, beach fishing, rock fishing. So a lot of you guys out there like going shore fishing. We realise that, but they're asking about tackle. We don't know a great deal about the latest and greatest tackle because most of my stuff should have come out of the Victoria and Albert Museum. But, whoa, hey, it still catches fish. It does for me. Well, now, a lot of you guys out there want to know what's the latest and greatest is on the beach fishing scene. Well, although we don't know about it, we know a man who does. Down there is Tony and Chris Kirridge. He runs Tony's Tackle Shop. You've seen Tony before in our shore fishing videos. He knows loads about the latest gizmos, gadgets, long casting, short casting, sideways, inside, outside. <laughs> Let's go see what he's got to say. Hello, young Tony. Hello, Graham. How are you, you doing? Are, nice you're to in the see position you. I expect to see you in. All <laughs> yeah, your yeah. staff. So he's always sitting down. He's never in that shop doing anything. <laughs> but I see you've already got. I'll come out and have a fish. <laughs> Don't blame you. And you've, you've got uh, Chris is up there as well. So I know we got uh, double big casters here tonight. But the main thing is whether we catch or not. If we do great, if we don't, we don't. We want to learn about the latest tackle. Now, I've just already walked past your rod, yep. and I've seen the tip is so fine, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's... So what is that all about? Right. Yeah, Graham, this is the new Calmic rod from Italy. The latest thing that everyone's buying. Fantastic rod. Absolutely weighs nothing. It probably weighs, I don't know how many ounces, but it's Oh incredible. my God, it's nothing. It's, like, if a, you look, it's it... like a feather, this. Yeah. It's like a feather. How long is that? Uh, it's 15, 15 foot, 4.6 metres. It's, it's about one mil thick on the tip, if you have a look. It's Fantastic. unbelievable. Yeah, the I saw, tip it, I saw it when I came past it so far. And they cast seven and eight ounce weight, weights on these, and I just don't know why they don't break, but they're just phenomenal, you know. It's the best rod I've ever seen. I've been making and designing rods for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for different companies, you know, Shimano, Daiwa, whatever. But I've never seen anything like this. Um, they sponsor me with one. Yep. I think it's really brilliant. I don't use it all the time. It's a little bit tough in the winter, you know, if you're down Dungeon S. And I use me Ian Gold's extractor, which I've sure. used my old faithful, as you know. But if I'm fishing over smooth ground and it's pretty good, you know, there's not too much rock, the things love it. Cast casts overhead absolutely miles. And uh, a lot of the guys actually use a fixed ball with it. I use a multiplier. Now, is that why there's so few rings on it? Because well, I don't even see that guys up there. One, two, three, four, there's five rings and a tip ring. Right, I'll just slide it out the camera. There's your reel. It must be the best part of five feet with nothing. Yeah. Well, I don't but the understand thing is, it doesn't that. affect is it, is a multiplier. You can still cast with a multiplier, okay. But the main thing is the rings are very small because they're what they call low riders, and they've done a lot of tests and realised that you don't have to have this massive rings anymore on the rods. Sure. This will cast fixed ball miles, and they use ten pound braid, like I said to you before in an earlier video. Ten pound fire line. They'll use. Um, a tapered leader, so you get a nice small knot. That's so you don't either yeah. catch your thumb on it or, yeah, that's or right, snarl up. Yeah, you've got very finesse rings on here, so you don't really want to be playing about with great big knots and things like that, the 60 pound, 70 pound leader, you know. Now, do they come in different ranges, or is it a one-off rod They've got throws... a massive range of rods. Um, yeah. This seems to be the most popular, the 07. It really is beautiful livery, it's a fantastic rod. Seems to be the one people are after. Same thing happens on Graham in all the tackle world. It's always the way, you can't get them. Oh, really? I've been waiting two months for them to come in. I've got people who've ordered them, they're waiting for them. Um, they're £449, they're not a cheap rod by any means. Yeah, yeah. means. I'm glad you're but, casting it, Tony. Yeah, <laughs> but people like, are waiting for them. You know, they're coming in on the 28th of July, they'll come in and whoever's ordered one's going to get one, but then maybe they have a shortage again. Now, That's something else, guys, look down here. Graham Pullen seen it, it looks like an ergonomic grip, is that? Yes, that's a right, yeah. Just there, that's, that's uh, something different. A big... Nice hand grip. And so they, they've near enough thought about everything, you know? Um, now that's long for me, Tony, is that long from the butt? Yeah, it, to here, is that a bit long? It, is there a different way worked, of casting? It's been worked out basically t to be spot on. Yes. You know, because if it's a little bit long, I mean, sad as it is, you probably could chop a little bit off. It's not the thing <gasps> to do, I know. But if, if you did really, you was really short in the arms, you weren't getting on with it, yeah. you could chop a little bit off and it wouldn't hurt too much. But, you know, they've got to find some kind of place for the fitting. And on average, that's probably about 20, 28 and a half inches, yeah. which is about perfect. That's you know? about standard. Yeah. Thing, yeah. If, if you go too high, you become what we call straight arm and you can't get any, any uh, power. 
and if you go too low, obviously it might suit yourself, but unfortunately not everyone. Now, but the other thing, the other thing that, that people ask about they, um, when they come on the uh, on the site to mic and that, casting, oh, they're pendulum, pendulum, pendulum. Can you pendulum cast with that? I've or is tried, it a wrong I've type tried, of Graham, and I can't. You know, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what it is. Maybe length, if I... Maybe too long? Maybe if I... No, it's not the lead. It's not the lead. What it no? is, you, you, because the tip is so fine, you tend to lose the lead. Oh, I see. You lose control where it is. Yeah. But I would think... I've seen guys from Italy and they pendulum them a long, long way. So you can. But the thing is, I'm not... I can't... I'm used to a heavy rod when I come round, pick up the lead. With this, I'm finding that I'm losing the lead. And it's probably something I'm doing, and maybe a bit of practice, and I will be able to. But I've definitely, if you look on YouTube, you'll see someone casting this. Oh, really? Phenomenal. And he absolutely brings it right down and hits it. And in, in Spain, yeah. they, they do like a South African cast. Yes. And what they'll do is they'll put it almost 360 degrees, yeah. and they'll come right round and they swipe it. Really? And, and they go further than all the English. And that's They've just the, won that's the world the lead on the ground, ground isn't it? That, that on method. the ground, and they come round, and it's quite scary. They use they use light line, they, they find knots to make the line light, oh, lighter no. as it goes through. And oh, it, I've got the knots in my line. When, when it hits the water, you've probably got six pound line on there Bloody because they, it's all yeah. staggered down, you know. But I'm not 100% up on it, but if you look on the Ask Any of the England team, it's just a big thing. And, you know, it's just incredible what they do. Now, what are you, what are you fishing with it there? What, what, what variety of reels can you... I've got a 7HT, I just, I'm afraid that I love them, you know. Yeah. Um, beautiful reel. Look, doesn't look nice, I know, but I've had it for years. I've got four or five of them, and I just love them because they seem to be foolproof. Okay. Yeah. You can overhead cast them, you can pendulum, and, and for some reason, um, I don't know exactly what it is, but they've got an extra ball bearing in the handle. But a lot of reels, they'll lift when you cast, and you get overruns. But for some reason, these 7 HTs, you can slam them, and they just don't lift. Really? So you don't get no problem. They're you know? just a one-size-fits-all, or do they do different models? Uh, well, the new ones, the blue one and the, the ultimate one, which I should have. Maybe my friend's dial will help me out one day. Yeah. Um, they've got one at <laughs> nearly 450 quid, which Ooh. is the ultimate 7 HT. To match that rod Yeah, one, it's it? beautiful. I mean, I need to get one. I mean, I'll be honest with you, but I've just been sort of got the rod and I'm pleased with that. And I've got to work on that first. OK. Get myself sorted. You know. Nine. There's plenty yeah. of these rods in the lower range. Sorry. We do a fantastic one called a Hazard. Yes. Which is only £99. Same maker? Yeah, same make, Colmic from yep. Italy. Same 15 foot, Beautiful same principles. Yeah, a friend of mine's got one, he loves it. And, and it only retails at around £89, £99. So it's bearable for anybody starting up, isn't it? Yeah, they've got a huge range of rods. And um, unfortunately, they're mainly in Italy, but they're working their way slowly into the UK. It's going to become a big thing, I tell you. What line? I oh, see so you got that black on. Is that that F1? Because I thought they'd stop making that. I'm is using there... Asso line now, which is uh, what is that? Spell that for me. I'm very just... similar. Asso line. No, Richard I'm... Yates. You know Alan Yates' his son? No, I don't. I know Alan. I've heard well, of Alan Yates. Richard yeah. runs a company called Asso. Yes. And his lines now are very good. Uh, they're similar to F1. I mean, I did used to yeah. like it. I saw, I saw, I saw black. I thought it was F1. Yeah, and other beach similar. guys I've done films with like the yeah. F1. It's, you it's, can't get any more, can you? I can't say it's the same because I don't know, but it's yeah. very similar. And the yeah. Asso line now is slightly cheaper. It's yes. very good stuff, you know. And which would be what? That's fifth? about twelve pound on there. Twelve pound. Yeah, yeah. What shot are you putting on there? Uh, I've got a um, tapered tapered leader, which will taper from fifteen to sixty. Okay. So, and there's others fifteen to seventy. You know, depending on what I'm doing. But basically, overheading, I overhead this rod, yeah. and it's very nice, you know, it's simple to get a long way. And, and it's not all about distance, you know, some nights you can go short and you catch more fish than anyone. Okay, which now, we know in the matches, as you've seen. Well, you've got your tried and uh, Yeah, this is my pendulum tested. rod. This is a pendulum, because you've got the reel down the bottom yeah. of that, haven't you? Yeah. Unfortunately, I got this out of the shop and I fell in love with it. So you and couldn't I sell it? No, I can't sell it. It's the one I haven't sold. I absolutely love it. It's called an Ian Gold's Extractor. I don't know what it's based on. It's very similar to a Ziplex M4, I believe, something like that. Yes. Similar to that, which is one of the best rods going. So he's throwing sixes and sevens? Yeah. I mean, I may get myself a Ziplex M4 at one point because they're supposed to be very nice, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do love this rod and I've caught a lot of fish on it and won a few bob. So sometimes you just stick with what you've got, don't you? That's it. Same line on there and. Only difference Same I, can, reel. I can spot on there is you got yeah obviously because I'm pendulum casting. You've got more power when you pendulum yeah, cast. Yeah, I, I need to put that thumb grip on there, which is just this bit of um, Le -le leather or something, is it? No, it's just a bit of inner tube. Yes. But it just gives you a grip so you can hold it. Because when you come round, if it slips off, one, well, it might kill anything. someone, which is not good. Yeah. But two, you also can't keep con you, your thumb slips yeah. off and it goes shooting off to the right. Yeah. Whereas with that 
on there, which is permanently on there, you can just put it over. Yeah. Make sure you're not seeing the other corner to where you're casting. Yeah, yeah. No problem, you know. And you got that what just taped on there, Tony, under there? You, yeah, it's just a bit on? of tape on a bit there. Of electrical tape on yeah, there. Yeah, it doesn't look very clever. It's earth. I no, I like that. He's even earth yourself. Yeah, I know. So, in case you get so, a lightning strike. <laughs> it's terrible my tackle, I'm afraid. I'm not a I'm not a tackle tart really. I like tackle, yeah. but I'm afraid I don't look after it. I use it as a fishing tool, you know. Yeah. It's because I go fishing all the time, I love it. And, and I don't, my rings are terrible, everything like that, you know. You're in a club. Sometimes a guy with a perfect rod don't catch no fish, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now, Tony, I'm looking down here at the tripod. There's another thing I haven't seen. And, it, like, the plastic inserts look to me like they're going to be luminescent. I don't know. This is the Ingold Supermax tripod. This is the latest one. Um, we've got luminous um, cups on here, which is quite nice when you're fishing at night. Sometimes, you know, it's nice to just shine your headlight on it. You can see them, they flash back. You know where it is. I know you know, but it's just little added extras. And I found with a suit match, it's got everything. You've got a thing here for your, um, when oh, you're so fishing a match, sorry. Does that um, make your bait rigs? You yeah, what you do, bait. you put that, attach that there. If you're in a match, you'll attach it both sides, no problem. Uh, also keeps the tripod nice and rigid. Um, you put your rigs on here, so you can get four rigs on there, no problem. Um, just keeps them all splayed out away from each other. So while you're casting out, you can rebate your next one, so when you come in, you clip it on and you're away. Um, it's and, very light. And luminous cups at the bottom. Yeah, that again. luminous cups on the bottom. And um, that really should be set, but unfortunately, I'm not too bothered tonight. Yeah. It does me, but yeah, you should have that around the other way. This is a, this is a maximum thing I'm thinking here, Tony. I'm looking, I've got my rod up like this, right? So I can see them going from the side. You've got yours parallel to the beach. Is that a match thing? Why have you gone like that? It, it, if you're sitting on your box, if, if you get these people and they've got their rods sticking up miles, if you're in a match, you're sitting on your box, you're baiting up, you, you, you can look at your rod comfortably at eye level if you put them right. You tend to go home like this a lot. I've seen so many people fishing and they're up like this and they go home with the stiffest neck and they wonder you know, if they've been either fishing or 10 rounds with Mike Tyson, you know, <laughs> something like that. But basically, it's eye level. Everything's at eye level. You can see it, you can handle it, you can bait up while you're looking. Okay, Graham, this is a pulley panel which we use for bigger fish generally, smooth hounds or whatever. Got a 2 0 blued hook on there, Camasan, um, 79510, 79515, a smaller hook there. What you can do, 
it's a pulley panel. But what you can do, I tend to be, the way I do it, I wrap it round, a lot of people don't like that, but it does the job, you know, on the second hook. Um, you can actually do it with tubing, elaborate it, much smarter, you know, it takes a bit more time, but basically this is the main hook, the one on the bottom that's serious, you know. Um, I tend to offset that just with a pair of pliers a little bit, that hook. Um, with the pulley panel, what you've got, you can clip it down on an impact lead. I use a five and a quarter smaller weight on my Colmic because obviously with a Colmic rod, I don't want to be over, I know it would take the seven ounce lead, five and a quarter is ample, you and me. Um, it clips on there on the pen, panel. The water pressure will push the impact shield off and it always comes off. It'll never get, the only way it can get trapped on there is if you get a lot of sand in between here. So you must always remember to keep that nice and flowing, you know. You sometimes dump it on the sand, the sand will sort of like get... Keep it clean, keep it clean. And it, and it, yeah, I normally dump on in the water before I cast. Okay. Just in a little bucket of water to make sure it's all moving nicely. Um, what happens is, when you get your fish take it, like your smooth hound or your cod, you actually, it pulls the line through, and what happens, it pulls that lead, I don't know if you can see that, it'll pull it up to the top. So as you're reeling in, the lead's up the top and the fish is trailing. So it kind of keeps it out the rocks, if you can understand. Sure, yeah. You keep it up in the water a bit. Your lead comes to the top. That will pull your fish up to the top. That's a great thing. I'll, I'll show you there if you want to look again. See, it's, that's how you're fishing. The fish will take it. It'll pull it. As you've hooked him, it'll pull up, and it'll pull up to the top, and it'll keep it nice and tight and nice and up the top of the water. And good, good for beginners as well. You know, if they're fishing snaggy Excellent. ground. If you're fishing any snaggy ground, you get it up to the top quick. Yeah, they get the gear back, you know, get your gear back. And it's the perfect rig because even when you tie it, you know if you don't make this snood length too long, it's always going to clip on the impact. And sometimes people spend hours trying to get them the right length on, on panels and stuff. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So it's always going to re reach it. As long as you don't make it too long on the snood, yeah. it'll reach the impact lead and you'll clip it on. Yeah. What's make what's sure what's on here that you've got a Gemini lead on here, okay? Because the Genie rig clip has got a hook on it and I got caught out the other day with it I didn't notice there was one on there and what tends to happen if you make it up with the one with the hook over which is a genie link a uh, rig clip it could could get trapped between there and the leg the ring oh, good so yeah. basically always use the link clip which has got nothing on it to get trapped and just put it on there and your water pressure pings it off and away it goes and of course it'll cast a long way that's a good thing and uh, obviously most of the time going for a big fish you want distance I mean, I caught a lovely cod, I don't know if I've seen you, down Langley Point. Yeah. Uh, 14 pound, 14 ounces. That's um, a big one. Yeah, December big... the 14th, I think it was. Really? Good And that's fish. one of my biggest cod on the beach last year at Langley Point. And I caught it on a pulley rig and it was brilliant. Yeah. And yeah. the poor old guy who was going to get it in for me, I said, look, just boot it out. <laughs> and as he got nearer and nearer, he see how big it was and he dived on it, bless him. He's oh, one really? Of my, one of my people who come in the shop. And he, he dived on it and he was cuddling it like Crocodile Dundee. He wasn't going to let it go. Oh, God, blame and him not. Blame him, him not. a guy yeah. who comes in, uh, Mr Hicks, and he's a diamond. And without him, I probably wouldn't have got it. Yeah, it's yeah. crashing about in the surface. It's quite a bit of wind that night. And that's the time you can lose the big fishes yeah, on that backwash, isn't it? He, he got drowned, but bless his heart, he done it for me. And I was so proud of him. You know Did you me? pay his laundrette bill, well, Tony? I'll give a packet of luck. <laughs> <laughs> This, by the way, guys, is his son, Chris. Oh, yeah. Now, Chris, uh, while Tony's sorting out a crab, I think he's put on nine pairs of gloves, his old woman. <laughs> you had an unbelievable catch down here at Celsi, which is why we're here. What was that catch? Tell us a little bit about that catch. Yeah, I uh, come down here last year with my dad and uh, got a load of peeler crabs and we had 16, uh, 
16, 17 smooth hands between all three of us. It was really, really good night. And what sort of size? Good fish? Uh, up to 12 pound, I think the biggest one was. Dad had, unfortunately. Oh dear. We no, weighed, I can't we win weighed them all. all, but they all averaged about seven and a half, eight pound. Uh, and then there was the odd bigger one. So it was really good fishing, really good fun. And what sort of period of tide? You know, I mean, is there any particular tide if guys come down here? Seems to be a couple of hours into the flood, they start start coming. We're, we're experiencing a lot of weed here tonight, so um, unfortunately it's not helping situations. But normally two or three hours into the flood, and if they're here, they normally feed all the way through the rest of the tide, all the way up to high tide. Now, some on your wrist there, Chris. I it's caught my BDI. Is that a like a thumb stall? Yeah. Because Dad's got one on his rod, but I've never seen one that actually goes on your wrist. Yeah, it's for the fixed ball. It goes around your wrist and you just slide it over your finger. It stops the line cut in your finger I got you, yeah. when you're casting. Good idea though, isn't it? Simple, oh, it's good. It's really handy and then you, you can't lose it because it stays on your exactly. wrist all the time. Here's a nice Peter Crab Graham. Okay. He's all happy. And uh, here's one we prepared earlier. He's all ready to go. Beautiful nice and juicy. What we do when we get to this stage, what I normally do when I'm smooth hounding, I've found, we've been down here quite a lot me and my boy Chris, and I've found that these fish, they they don't want a massive bait. Sure. I, I, I've come down here a couple of times and slipped up, I've put a big bait on, fishing for, like I've fished for crab, trying to get all the juice coming out of it. Well you think so, And yeah. I've found that they just want a small bait. And a couple of times Chris, the last time we came down here, he hammered me, hammered bought all of us, and he just, on Halfway small through ones. the night, he said, Dad, just half a crab is fine. Yeah. And then I caught about six on the turn after that, when it was nearly all over. <laughs> but he caught he caught about 12 on his own. Really? On a 12, it's brilliant. But what I do, everyone's got their own way of doing it. I've cut it in half. Yeah. On this occasion, I've cut it just a little bit bigger in half. You and me. Yeah. Um, I normally find a leg socket like that, push it through, and I'll put it through, just through there, OK? Yeah. Now, the second turn is quite good because you can put it through the second turn like that. If you do it right and ease it over the shank, you can put it over for a third time and you just clip that there. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I, in the past, we've been fishing for flounders up at Silla for that. I've actually, it used to be speed fishing. I've actually done that with no cotton or nothing, just trim the edges and you used to have to bait up really fast. We caught hundreds of flounders, you know? Yeah. And I used to put it on like that three times Friend Graham Ward taught me how to do it. One, two, three, smaller hook obviously, and it sits there and it won't come off. You can whack it. Really? But what I like to do when I'm fishing for um, smooth ounce is take a piece of elastic cotton, very fine stuff you want, Graham. Yes. Don't buy all that thick stuff, it's horrible. Is it that ghost ghost something they call it? Or you can use that. Or Most fine elastic, tronics, anyone. Tronics it'll do, do it, nice yeah. fine elastic, C match elastic. Yep. I do my own and it's all good. Um, some of the guys down at Devon, they, they love, uh, there's a shop down there, they love sea match elastic, what I do. Oh, really? It's yeah. the best, but I think it's all much of a muchness, you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, this is, I put it on and I start to make, it almost reverses the crab when you do it. You keep it going around nicely. Um, some people say, oh, you're mummifying it, you're putting too much on, but I, I don't think you can put too much cotton. You can put too much cotton on, but you do need it to be stay in one place and be rigid. I normally go around the hook a few times, so it's kind of like basically it's not going to slip down. You and you want to make sure you don't cover that hook point too, don't yeah. you? I mean, something like maybe glasses, you've got to make knots, sure you don't go over. Two knots, through where you started, so you make a nice little knot of it. And that, I mean, that's a nice little bait. You've got juice coming out of it, you've got your hook point showing. I don't know if you can see it yeah, there. Yeah, I've got it there, yeah. That's good enough. You know, if you're bassing, you put a much bigger bait on, but that'll do. And then with this hook here that I've got here, the panel. That's the second smaller hook yeah. you're showing us here. What I'll do on that one, I'll twist it a couple of times on there, near, and then I'll probably, just on there, I'll just nick it, well, I'll put it a bit nearer, but sometimes just nick it in the top, and just put a little, um, couple of pieces of claws on there, you know what I mean? Yeah, just so you've just it got off, another yeah. hook on top, it gives you two chances, because when you do get one, you don't want to miss it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So yeah. in that, I'll just, I'll peel a couple of claws now, and I'll just put a couple of claws on that top one. If you don't know if you want to hang on, I'll show you. Um, I'll put a couple of claws on the end to show you. This is all about the quality of the crab. They're easy to peel these because they're so good, um, courtesy of Alan's Marine in uh, 
Portsmouth and Nick, good old Nick, or we'd have been in trouble tonight. They're your bait suppliers, yeah? Yeah, we've been having a bit of a problem getting crab and he's helped me out today, it was nice. And some of the, it's been a tough year to get bait this year, you know? Anyway, he's done us proud and he's got us some and I have to get some fish. See, I'll just put that on there like that, just a couple of turns on it. And I'll put another one on and then that'll just about make it right, you and me. But as I say, it does look small to bait, but I've had a lot of success down here with a smaller bait. I can't believe it. It shocked me, you know, because yeah. unfortunately when I bring people down here who haven't done it before, they're very tentative, so they'll put a small bait on. Yeah. And I was noticing that a couple of times they were getting them and I was not getting bites, wondering what was going on. So I was topping up. As I brought in, I put another one on. I got adding to it. Yeah, yeah, adding to it. Now I always take off and start again, so that's yeah. important, you know. And maybe I'll just peel a couple of legs now and put a couple of legs on that top of and it's ready to go. And you're making a second rig up while your line's fishing. You've actually, you're actually making the second rig up, aren't you? Oh yeah, while that's out there, I've got another rig on my tripod, which basically I will have um, bait up. As soon as it comes in, I've got another bait on there. Yeah. And, and to be honest, while you're sitting there waiting, if it's not too busy, it's a good thing just to bait up another one. It's already then, you know what I mean? That's a matchman in you, isn't it, Tony? Yeah, I think so. I mean, most pleasure anglers wouldn't bother, but I do tend to do that. But that's quite nice. Nice little bait. There it is, ready to go, Graham. Nice compact little bait. Other thing, it'll go a lot further because it's compact, it's nice and streamlined. Also, we've got amnesia here. I didn't mention that. We use amnesia, which is um, beautiful. It's non-memory. There's no memory in it, so you can smooth it out. If you get a fish, you can run your fingers along it and it straightens out beautiful and it hangs nice. Better than most, most things. Maybe the only other length I use is fluorocarbon when it's scratching. A fish, Tony, what's that? Fish. It's a red mullet. And a big hook. <laughs> that is a big hook. Yeah, but it's took the small hook, see, it's above on the on the um panel That's rig. What were we talking about earlier? It's you a have very a small one. Small fish, Graham, but it's a nice Oh look, it's nice fish. though, yeah. Beautiful colours, look. It uh, just shows you you can get a small fish on a bigger hook, doesn't it? But uh, we're really struggling tonight, aren't we? But yeah, well, we're struggling, you're yeah. not, you've got one. <laughs> when that weed goes, we get some fish, no worries. Yeah, that's a nice, unusual one, though. It's something different, you know. Exactly that, Don't catch yeah. hundreds of them. Beautiful colours on it, look. Back in, very small, but we're going to put him back anyway, he's still alive. And it's got that red mark either side, isn't it, so? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a red mullet. Beautiful colours. I feel it's a British record goat fish from the shore. <laughs> and you're, yeah. and you're about, about to put it back. You're about to put it back. <laughs> yeah. Fame's gone as well as fortune. <laughs> Usual though, isn't it? Something different. Never know what you're going to get, do you? On a big uh, panel hook going for a smooth out. <laughs> I'll put him back anyway. Yeah.
Well, guys, we've heard a shout from down the beach. I see Chris's headlamp moving, so I don't know whether Tony's got a fish on or not. I see Tony's fish on, Tony. He's in shock. He's in shock, folks. Got one, uh, you got one on, mate? Yeah, it's easy, oh, bloody hell, don't let it uh, get you around yeah, no snags or anything, mate. On the old helmet. <laughs> oh, good man. I think Mike said he heard you shout you had a bite or something. Yeah, good bite. It's a smooth hound. That rod has been double. You can get a shot of that rod. Their eyes light up, Graham. What sort of bite was that, Tony? It just went straight off the rod wrist. I don't think it's that big. It's a decent one, though, you know, but. Oh yeah, pounds. look at him going now. Whoa, oh, don't, don't, don't break him off! Don't break him off! Can you see that? Oh no! He's just oh, no. Up, look. He might be ten pounds. Can't tell what we get him in. We don't want any weights. We just want to see something with fins on it. That's all we want. I just said to Chris, I said, when that gets dark, we might just get one. It's been tough tonight, hasn't it? Hasn't it, Jess? I, I haven't seen one fish. It must be. About a dozen other guys down the beach here. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it is tough. Yeah, look, he's in here. Let me oh, go, yeah. Come off, Graham. He's come off. Okay. No, he's there. No, there he goes, there he goes. There he goes, he's still there. What's your feet, man? It's alright, he's only a small one. We're getting close. He's only small. Just get him through. Don't worry, dude. Go on, then put him up. Smoke that. Smoke that. <laughs> well, he's not that small. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Tony's special rig of crabs has come up with the goods. Oh, look at that. Nicely hooked. We were just saying they don't really get to a sort of gut hook, do they, smooth hounds, Chris? No, normally just hooked in the lip. Is that because they're fast feeders? Crab, yeah, and they got... That's your special crab, yeah? Bit that we filmed earlier on. Oh, he's not a bad one, is he? No, no, absolutely not. We, so, weigh heavy normally. I'll get the bucket and we get the scales, yeah? So yeah, grab my Watch your roll, don't tread on that 41 pound, 100 pound rod there. I'll, I'll pick the rod up. Yeah, there, let me you. get in there. What are you saying, Chris? 5'10. 5'10. 6. Mike's on 6, I'm 6. 7 pound 2. Well, he caught it, you'd say that, wouldn't he? 7 pound 2. Right, there we go, there's the scales. Which is, as you can see, oh, he's out. Nine. <laughs> I could be right here, you know, boys. Six pound ten. Seven pound four and change me nine. Right, there's the scales. They're on nine, yes. Just nine pound two, yeah? Yeah, agreed, there you go. Yeah. Right, nine pound two. Let's move on back to the sea when you want, or do you want some more? We'll put him there for a second, just wait a bucket. So yeah. Nine pound two less. Now, as a shopkeeper, That's you should That's a big bag of crabs. Oh my god, look, that's three pound, two I mean, pound. Let's do it. So that's seven pound. Oh, it's that's six two pound ten. 14. Six pound ten. Right, two pound fourteen off of nine pound two. Go on. What, at this time of night? <laughs> I've had six Cokes. <laughs> that's six pound two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boom, I'll take it. No, Who won that? Mike? <laughs> yeah. yeah the I didn't know them crabs weighed so heavy, eh? <laughs> Oh, to be a celebrity. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> How's that then, all right? Yeah, yeah let's get back in the water. Okay, he'll go back nicely. Now, I don't know if you want to film him going back. Yeah, yeah, very, we'll strong, yeah we'll film very strong fish, these. Yeah. They yeah. really fight well, as you see. And he'll go back nicely. I'll just pop him in here. You ready? Yeah, wait for this. Might wait. get him swimming away a bit of luck. He's, He's gone. gone. He's gone. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> there there go. Another one, Tony. <laughs> it's not quite a British record, is it? That one. No, but so it's another fish, isn't it? It's another fish. Listen, it's, it's a red mullet and uh, two more than we've caught. Oh, look at that! It'd be strong enough to go back. They're very strong oh, yeah. fish. So it's a neat little fish, aren't he? Yeah. Look at that little bit of crab, isn't he? Look. Lovely little baby. He might grow up to be a big one in the end. Exactly. Hopefully. hopefully. Well, guys, Mike's on. We're in a mess. This is this is carnage. Now. We're in a totally awesome mess now. We don't know what tackle we got. Oh, go. oh, look at this! Oh yeah. no, it's in a small one. Time, hey, fucking hell! Good stuff. Nice move. Just, just keep tight. He, wants to go. he wanted to go that time, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He's got... I saw that bite in the dark. 
We were just talking about that, weren't we? Just like the yeah. rod tips and the You've dad's old bod shot. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. You can take yeah, mine if you want. Chris, do you think I ought to bring them other rods in, mate, or should I just leave no, them? No, it should be fine. We'll just work around them. Oh, he's coming straight. Just keep him. Just a nice, smooth pressure on him, mate. He's gone off. He's still there. Yeah, he's still there. I swim say. towards him. When he gets yeah. to the edge here, he'll watch. He don't start a, digging. He go, he go fight hard again. Yeah, be prepared to sort of walk towards it when he gets tighter. Yeah. Like, here he goes. Here he goes. Then when he comes to the water's edge, you want to slowly walk backwards, Mike. Okay. Just give yourself some distance. Otherwise, it's too much pressure, is it? Yeah, you want to give yourself a bit of distance, then I'll, I'll go down and get behind him. Yeah. I'll tell you what's frustrating, you can see it. <laughs> it's all in the dark, and I can't even see the bend in the rubber. But trust me, put your light up there, Chris, you see. Just hold it there, look, there's a the bend in the rubber. He's going. He's getting in closer now. He's getting close, he's digging, it could be a decent he's seven or eight pounder. He's probably coming in on this next wave, I think. He's got a bit of fight in him. Oh still, man, still yeah. He's down. planing along, he's going along the edge of the... Uh, he's going up, <laughs> up tight. Edge of the sea there. He's a nice one. Ooh, oh, nice yeah, fish, nice fish. Nice and smooth as a small hook. Chris, yeah. leave it to you, mate. Yeah. Keep your tools just on. Take your time, take your time yeah. Slowly walk back to you. I'm walking back now. Yeah, just very slowly. On the line, man. Oh, nice fish. Take your time, Chris. Watch the nice and small hook, mate. Very small hook. Got him? <laughs> got him? Yeah. Oh, that's oh, more that's like nice. it. He's <laughs> a 10 pounder, I reckon. Oh, Hold that up, mate. Oh. That's what you want. Hold on. You don't like nine pounder. That is. There Did you, you get it, Mark? Mike? Huh? Yeah. Did you get it? Yeah. yeah. Good boy. Just saw the bloody rod was gone ballistic. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what a fish. What a junk. I think we need a still of that as a PB, isn't it? Oh, easy. Well, sure, no, for, sure. for sure. You've got to thank me now for yes. dragging your dad down yeah. here when he didn't want to go. <laughs> you know what I'm worried about? The price those crabs are going to cost us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. We'll give this one a Brilliant, break. brilliant. Let's what, get a still of that, Mike. Yeah, do you want to get the camera? There we go, guys. Ten pounds. Exactly. On the nose. Look at that. What an awesome fish. That's my first ever smoothie from the shore, I have to say I would definitely be back, thanks to Tony's tips, yeah, exactly. Tony and Chris and their good little tips, they're only, only small tips, little changes, but like small baits, small crab baits, and you know, we tend to go for the old big bait, but just goes to show, small baits can get you a big fish. Let's get him in the water. Let's get him back. Get a booty. Oh! <laughs> Here we go. He's away. It's murder and mayhem here, folks. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> they are like everywhere. Exactly what you said, wasn't it, guys? You know, yeah. packs come through. Chris, right. And when they come through, they come through big time, don't they? That'll be another slack liner on that, Graham. That was a slack liner, Mum, was yeah, it? Come back with slack. Yeah, put him back. Good fish. Let's get him in the water. Here he goes. 